Good morning. We begin our live coverage on NASA television of Mission STS-85 here at NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center in Fire Room 3 of the Launch Control Center. Today, NASA will embark on the 86th Space Shuttle flight in its 16-year history of the shuttle program. The near 11-day mission features the deployment and retrieval of a satellite designed to study Earth's middle atmosphere and significant tests of hardware that could be used in the assembly of the International Space Station. This is Shuttle Launch Control. We have the flight crew at their uh, breakfast table. We have uh, payload commander Jan Davis. She's flying uh, for the uh, third time today. And we have Bob Kerbeam, shuttle rookie, flying for the first time today. And Commander Kurt Brown, making his fourth time in uh, flight today. First time as commander. Kent Rominger, two-time shuttle veteran. And we have Stephen Robinson, flying for the first time today. And Canadian astronaut Bjarni Trigveson, also flying on the shuttle for the first time today. Crew has been awake now for uh, just about half an hour, getting ready for the first flight day on their upcoming mission. Crew is uh, ready to go. They came to Florida uh, Monday evening and have been uh, at Kennedy Space Center preparing for the flight over the last couple of days. got Commander Kurt Brown, who's just uh, walked into the suit-up room uh, following the weather briefing. This is his fourth flight, uh, and he has overall responsibility for commanding the flight. This will be his first flight as commander. He served as pilot of three previous missions on STS-92, and we have uh, pilot Kent Rominger. As pilot, he will assist Brown at the flight controls. This will be his third flight and uh, his uh, birthday today. He's 41 years old. He will also uh, be assisting uh, commander during the rendezvous and retrieval of the Krista Spas payload and will also be involved in several payloads including the solid surface combustion experiment. We have Canadian astronaut Bjarni Trigveson making his first flight on the shuttle today. Trigveson was born in Reykjavik, Iceland. So we've got Jan Davis. She's making her third flight today. She's the payload commander with overall responsibility of servicing tasks. She will operate the robot arm to deploy and retrieve the German Krista Spas payload. She'll also be involved in the manipulator flight demonstration, which is a small, fine robot arm. And we have mission specialist Robert Kirby making his first flight today on the shuttle. He serves as flight engineer and will assist the commander and pilot with ascent and re-entry checklists and in monitoring all vehicle systems. And we have mission specialist Stephen Robinson. This will be his first flight. He is the prime mission specialist for the Krista Spas payload and he will work with Jan Davis on, with the robot arm activity and will operate several experiments.
We're now looking at the final inspection team on the top of the mobile launcher platform. This crew has uh, binoculars and uh, they perform photo documentation of the vehicle configuration and uh, cryogenic surfaces. They collect uh, data with uh, an infrared scanner. They're looking at uh, numerical data and uh, they correlate it with uh, infrared data. Who's getting ready for a 10 day mission? And Houston, CDR, Comcheck. CDR, Houston, you're loud and clear. Good morning, Kurt. We see you up close and personal there. Uh, good morning, Don. We have you loud and clear also. Now we see the birthday boy getting into his seat, the pilot. He's only gone to, uh, to two handrails, one in the center of the, uh, near the windows and one on his right side. And then as they hold his parachute, he pulls himself down into the seat. Adjustment on channel 152, please. Last crew member in, Bob Kirby, in the uh, MS2 seat. Well, I've got you here. I'll give you a step uh, 570 to work for the clock if you want for the perform the fuel cell purge on channel 153. Okay, we'll put that into work as well. Do you need a QC there? Uh, we'll just use all we've got. Okay, copy.
Copy that. Range weather? Roger, sir. We have low constraints to lock, Turbo. And ops manager? Uh, ops manager, uh, we're not, the MMT is not uh, tracking anything, and uh, looks like we're going for launch. You're cleared to proceed with the launch count. Copy that. And Discovery, uh, looks like everything is ready to go. You guys have a great mission, and we'll see you back here uh, at the conclusion of the mission. And NTD, you are clear to launch. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. The orbiter flight control services are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. And the three main engines will be gimbaled and positioned for launch. And flight crew, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. On behalf of the launch team, good luck with your mission. And Rommel, happy birthday. We're about to light your candles. Now, thanks for that birthday wish. will be the two best candles I ever had. And Discovery copies visors and pseudo two. TLS is go for ET, LA2, pressure station. 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery on a mission to study planet Earth. Program, Houston. Roger, roll. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston is now controlling. The roll maneuver is complete, and Discovery is now in a heads down, wings level position, headed to a 160 nautical mile orbit. Ram dilemma, manifold. Copy, no action on the dilemma. All three main engines now throttling down to 67% of rated thrust as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Telemetry indicates all three auxiliary power units and fuel cells continuing to perform well. Discovery, go at throttle up. 